Do you have a stash of napkins that you are looking for a way to utilize that is different than what you've done in the past? Well, grab a inexpensive composition notebook, one printed napkin, and we're going to create one good looking journal. This is what I created out of one napkin. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mix Media. I enjoy putting together journals, so I focus a lot on journals on my channel, but I also do other things. I have gotten into encaustic wax, and I am exploring that medium, as well as a bunch of other things from altered playing cards to master boards to ATCs, etc. over on my channel. So stop by. If you like my content, give me that thumbs up, subscribe, and the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. To get started with this project, I'm taking one napkin, and this is a three-ply napkin, so I'm pulling apart the plies, and we are going to utilize two of these plies. So we're going to start with a plain white. I've pulled out a stamp that is a block script stamp, and I'm just going to randomly put this across the entire napkin. As you can see, I'm not really paying too much attention to where I'm stamping down, and I've utilized black stays on ink. I have a couple of other stamps that I am going to utilize as well on this. And once again, just random placement. Once I am complete in my stamping, I'm going to move on to the composition notebook and that cover. And the first thing I'm going to do is kind of determine what type of placement I want with those that um, tissue paper, but to make sure that it adheres well, I've taken a fine piece of sandpaper, sanded over the cover, and now I'm laying down a coat of white gesso to diminish the color of the book, obviously, and to give the tissue paper something to grab onto. So I've sanded the, lightly sanded the composition notebook and now I'm laying down that coat of gesso. And I wound up laying down a couple of, of coats. Now to determine, I, I don't want to just put this all over, so I have taken my paintbrush and just drawn a line across that tissue with some water and that allows it to tear easily where I want to, or the pieces that I want to utilize of that. So now that I have those in place, I will glue them down with my glue and water mixture. And this creates the foundation or the base. I'm going to do this front and back. So we have that complete. I want to water down some gesso and just kind of move it a little bit to the background. So I have put a dab of gesso on the side, sprayed some water on it, and now I'm going back over just randomly on the front and back, and I'll allow that to dry. Once that is dry, I'm going to choose what portion of the napkin I want to use on my front and back cover. And I am picking segments of it for the front and segments of it for the back. I'll lay this right in the corner here and choose another little flower to put up in the upper right-hand corner. And then with the remainder of this napkin, I will create the back of the book. So there we go, and I think that will look nice. So let's glue that down. And I'm using a glue and water mixture. I will link my recipe for this in the description below. 
and I am also putting it on when I lay it down I put a thin coat down on the book and lay the napkin down and then I go from the center of the napkin out to avoid tearing that napkin because it becomes very fragile when you begin to get it wet. So that completes the front and the back of that book. I have both or the um, images from that napkin laid on both. And now I want to add some additional colors. So I have chosen a cool gray. And a violet. So I am going first with that cool gray. And I'm just applying with my fingers. And I'm adding a little water to this acrylic paint to soften it, um, lighten it, and allow it to spread more freely and in a thinner capacity. I'm just going around the images and just kind of taking it by feel as to what I think looks good, what might be too much, what <laughs> might not be enough. And I do want some of that uh, script stamping to kind of peek through, but it doesn't need to be a dominant part of my um, composition. And I'm also coming back in and doing a little shadowing around my flowers with that violet. And we'll add some of that violet in as well. And now that I am starting on really kind of shadowing around that flower, I have picked up a small paintbrush to just kind of dab around the outside edges and outline these flowers in that violet color. I think it adds a little um, dimension to the flowers, a little depth. Okay, so now we have that done, front and back. Or I guess what I wanted to say is we'll get that done on the back as well. And I have mixed up some texture paste, and once again, it's in those recipes below, and I've just added that cool gray to my texture paste, and I'm adding that texture paste onto the front cover. And I will do the same on the back. And I'm just pulling that texture paste through a stencil with one of my hotel key cards. So we're starting to take shape here. And that texture paste recipe is very, very easy. I make it with... Um, baby powder, glue, and acrylic paint. And instead of using a white acrylic paint, I used that cool gray and I made it in a very small um, amount. Now that I have everything dry, I'm going back in with a graphite pencil and just shadowing and um, adding in some, you know, shadow with the charcoal, putting it on, smudging it with a wet finger. This is a very easy way to decorate a composition notebook and it is also one that can be very attractive depending on the napkins that you have in stock. And now that I have everything laid down, I'm going around the outside edge with that stays on black ink to kind of frame everything in. And nothing is ever truly complete without a little bit of liquid pearls. So I want to define the 
wing of that dragonfly with this light um, liquid pearl. I think this is a, it's not a champagne, but it's a real pale yellow color liquid pearl. And I'm also going to take that inside these flowers as well. So I'm just doctoring, doctoring it up, adding a little bit of dimension with these liquid pearls where I think they'll look good. That's up to you how much or how little you want to utilize. But I am putting on quite a bit, just detailing and outlining and, and highlighting some of the areas of these flowers and the dragonfly. I have the front completed. Now I'm going to flip it over and do the back of the book in the same way. But after I have finished both the front and the back, it's time to think about what type of closure I want for this booklet, for this composition book. And I've decided to use this lace that I have in stock. It's just a black, um, I don't know what, what you would call this, but it's a very um, thin, transparent, lacy, I don't know what they call it, but I'm just going to tape it down and I'm pulling out the front and the back page because I had gotten some ink on it and I wanted to make sure that that was, was clean, the front page that, of the book was clean. So I'm going to tape this ribbon in the front and the back and I'm just using a masking tape. And there, that ties off nicely. I think it'd look fine in a bow or maybe a square knot, but we will determine, or the person that uses it will determine. So we have that complete, and now we have to do something with the end sheets for the inside front cover and the inside back cover. So I went to use the same colors. I'm starting with the cool gray and that stencil that I used to pull the texture paste through. So I'm laying that down as my base layer. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit. And then I will lay down my second color, which is going to be that violet. And I'm almost out of that violet, so I need to be cautious on how much I squeeze out. So I'm putting this floral stencil down on top of that. And I'm pulling it with a parchment. So once that dried, I laid that parchment down. And now we'll rub it to make sure that we get great contact with our paper and I'm just using a piece of photocopy paper. I'll let that sit for a little bit to make sure that we are good. And there is that print with the cool gray, the violet pulled with the parchment. We'll do that twice. And now to add some gold, I'm just utilizing a stencil and dabbing onto that stencil with a cosmetic sponge, that iridescent gold or the um, Deco Art Gold is what I've actually pulled out there, and I believe it's Splendid Gold. And that's all I am going to do with that. And now I have it cut to size for my inside front. I shall glue it down. And that is all I'm going to do for the inside of this particular composition book. Now, I may go back at a later time and add a pocket or add something else on the inside cover, but for right now, I am just making sure that those in sheets are in and glued down so that there's nothing that will peel up. There's your inside front. There is the inside back the back cover that turned out to be mostly butterflies on the back cover we can tie that off in a nice little bow or a square knot and hang out those two ties or the bow and I think I am going to display it with the bow and that completes 
this project, which is, I believe, number nine in the composition, altered composition notebook challenge that I did to myself. I think I have a dozen of these, if not more, that I will continue to decorate and continue to try to put new ideas out there for how to utilize and how to decorate these composition notebooks. So I hope that you are following along. The playlist will be at the end in my end screen and let me know in your comments if you like this one or if there was another one that you saw that you liked much better. So thank you very much for being here. Once again, give me that thumbs up. And of course, this is subscribe to my channel.